Hello guys, we are finally back. Today I'm going to show you a method uh, I'm using to measure the pinout of almost any laptop battery. The method is actually a generic method which can be used on any smart uh, battery. The method is about identifying the Zener diodes which are um, used to protect the communication lines against the ESD. Here we have the we have a battery connector, we have the VBAT, we have the clock, data and ground. The Zener di diodes are connected uh, like this. The anode is connected on the ground and the cathode is connected even to the clock, even to the to the data. Both diodes are identical. So when I am measuring them, I expect to have the same, almost the same value for clock and for data. I have here a thinner diode. I am going to measure it to see the value uh, I need to expect. So the value is about 0.7. Um, any value between 0.6 to 0.8 are considered to be to be okay for the diodes for the Zener diodes used into the laptop BMS. Okay, let's take an example. I have here a Dell battery. The first thing uh, I'm doing is to check if there is a label with. Uh, the signs for ground and plus in this example for this battery we the ground is in the left side and the plus is uh, in the right side mm. i usually start with the first pin from the left side i connect the black wire on the first pin from the left side then Usually the first and second pin pin, um, pin are connected together and also for the 8 and 9 pin also are connected together. So I'm going to connect the wires on the third and fourth pin. A red probe on the ground. Okay. And black probe on the on the battery pin we want to identify as clock or data so here we have 1.2 1.2 so these pins are not in the clock or data i'm moving the pins on the next two i'm moving the wires on the next two pins connect the red probe on the ground and here we have 7 uh, 0.7 on the yellow wire okay so on the yellow wire the, um, the clock or data can be we are not sure at this step i'm going to move the wire on the next pin usually the clock and data for for classic batteries are um, placed together next to each other okay on the green wire I'm measuring 0.7 volts, so I have identified the I have identified the channel diode on red, on green and on yellow wire. So on these two pins we have clock and data, but we are not sure which one is clock and which one is data. I'm connecting the battery to the NLBI B1. I'm starting reading, and wow, surprisingly, we have the we have a correct connection with the battery. We see that the battery status is it's locked, but this could be because the system present pin is not connected. Some batteries are using a system present pin, which needs to be connected to ground in order to activate the battery for charging and discharging. For okay, so after connecting the the system present pin. We can see that the output LED is on. If I remove the 
system present pin, the output LED turns off because the chip deactivates the power on the battery connector. In the software for Dell battery, usually it is required to start reading again because several special commands are sent at the, at the beginning. Okay, so right now we have a correct connection. We have the output LED on, so the battery is unlocked. The chip enables the, the power to the output connector. So everything is fine on the, from the connection point of view. I'm going to take another battery. This one is an ASUS battery. Um, I'm doing the same thing. I start with the first uh, pin from the left side. The second pin I will leave it empty because it's connected to the first pin. So third and fourth pin. Red probe on the ground. We don't know. We don't know if this is the the ground. We just we are just supposing. Point eight YB. Now let's move the pins on other two pins. Red probe on, on black wire. Ah, sorry, I'm not on the on the dive mode. Right now I'm on the dive mode. Point six. This could be good. It's red. It's a yellow wire. Point seven eight. Point six. Point six, point six. These two pins could be the the clock and data. I'm going to connect the red wire on the opposite pin. I'm going to connect the battery to the NLB one. Start reading. It's on and there is no data. Um, let's exchange the yellow and uh, green wire. We have uh, communication with the battery. This is good. Um, I think this battery also has a system present pin. Uh, let me try it. I usually connect an additional um, ground wire to the three pins, one by one. It's not this one. This is the system present pin. The output LED is on. And the battery is unlocked when everything is connected correctly. Good, let's take another battery. Here is another Dell. This pinout is the same as for the preview battery. The red wire is on the right. The green wire, the black wire is on the left. Clock and data are here. Okay. What I'm going to show is that sometimes the battery requires to be, the chip from the battery requires to be powered externally. NLBA supports uh, this uh, this option. We have the power on button. We press it. Okay, and more for this. For some batteries, it's also needed to connect the system present pin. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you that if I remove the system present pin. In some cases, the battery stops communicating, like in this case. The battery is good, the battery is unlocked, all the cells are fine, but it requires the system present pin to establish the communication. 
Okay, stop reading. I'm going to take another battery. Here we have another battery. Um, let's start with the black wire on the left side, red wire to the right side, green and yellow on the third and fourth pin. It's not recommended to keep the connector connected to the NLB1 because if I connect, uh, if I reverse the polarity, then the NLB1 protection is on and yeah, it's not good to, to work with the activation, with the protection mode uh, activated for a long period. Red probe on the ground. We are not sure that this is this wire is indeed the ground, but we we consider that this could this is the ground. Okay. So on yellow nothing, on green nothing. Let's move on another two pins. Okay, nothing. Nothing, maybe this is not the ground. Let's connect the ground on the right side. The clock and data are usually connected uh, next to each other. Okay, so we have on the green wire, on the green wire. Okay, so these two pins could be the clock and data. So this is the, the ground. If this is the ground, then this is the v -bot. And now we can connect the battery to the NLB1. We see that the output LED is off. Let's see if we have any reading. No, let's reverse the clock and data. No, still nothing. In this case, we can power on the battery, maybe the chip the cells are over discharge and the chip is not powered on. Still nothing. Let's switch again the clock and data. And yeah, we have communication with the chip. Yeah, power on is required because the the cells are over discharged. And the battery soon will stop communicating without the external power. Right now, even I connect the system present pin, the log status will remain. The, 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 this battery is clearly uh, locked because the cells are over discharged. This battery reports incorrectly unlocked. Okay. I'm going to take another battery. This is the last battery. This time we have a slim, a flat style battery. Uh, for this, we have this connector. Um, checking the connector, we can see that we have the ground and plus uh, marks. So the red wire is definitely the the V bot, and the black wires are the are the ground. So the first three are all connected to the ground and the last three are all connected to the v -bot. Okay, I'm going to take a spare connector. So the first three wires are connected to the ground. Ground is this pin. So 
So all three wires connected to the ground. Last three wires connected to the VBAT. Okay, and we start with green and yellow wires. Okay, and green and yellow yellow wires are the next two. I'm connecting them to the this block connector because because it's easy, easily to uh, to get access with the with the probe. Okay, so we have here the black, which is definitely the ground, so red probe on ground pin, multimeter is in diode mode, let's measure, no, this pin no, and here we have another three pins remain, so let's check them. 0.7 almost, 0.79, so these two are, no, this one and this one, point seven nine, point seven nine. these two are our communication pins, okay, so I'm going to remove the existing wires we don't know which one is clock and data we just try okay start reading no reading even we press the power on no reading. I'm going to change the data lines. And we are able to read the battery. Yeah, the cells, one cell is over discharged and that's why the battery is locked. Okay, if I'm pressing the power off button, then the chip from the BMS, it's not power on and the communication stops. If I press power on, then communication starts. Okay, so in principle, this is the method I usually use in order to identify the, the pin of a laptop battery. The NLB1 software has uh, a feature to identify the battery pin out by in entering the part number, but yeah, maybe there are some batteries which are not into the database. Uh, you can use the the method which uh, was just described. And if you find a new battery pin out, please uh, use the this feature in, in order to uh, to add it into the database. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye bye.